And then you have the step, this is called the step increment due to lack of service. The longer you stay in the in government or in the Department of Education, for every three years of continuous of education, but I am the youngest in terms of ideas and programs in the department. And we have established what I describe as the Education Futures Program, wherein we try to discern. Hindi naman parang Madam Auring, what society will be, what it will need, so that education can respond. Like, for example, the possibilities now of robot teachers, which are being studied in other countries, brain implants, machines, which are so much better than humans. And how can humans remain human in, uh, in the light of all these uh, fascinating developments? So we are not looking at next year's election, Mr. President. But perhaps 30 years from now, 40 years from now, what will society be like? How will we prepare our learners? How will we prepare them mentally, uh, aside from memorizing multiplication uh, tables, Mr. President, as well as correcting their grammar? So this is one program which we are very interested in. And of course, another uh, new addition and uh, Senator Wong is, is here with me, of course, is the establishment of the National Academy of Sports, which uh, we are hoping to open also within uh, this year, also together with the formal opening of classes. So, bago itong dalawa, National Academy of, For of, of Sports and the Education Futures uh, Program. So, Mr. President, these are just a few of the things that we have uh, achieved with your support, with your inspiration, and of course, with your financial uh, generosity. And we look forward to um, attaining uh, these goals by the time your term ends. Thank you, Mr. President. Salamat, uh, I'd like to Call on uh, Professor Special Lady Chen. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have a PowerPoint presentation. Can you please flash it? Okay, I'd just like to give an update, Mr. President, on the reopening of classes in higher education. Next slide, please. Uh, out of the close to 2,000 uh, universities and colleges, about one-third has already opened in August, Mr. President. So, nagsimula na yung semester para sa ibang malalaking eskwelahan. The others are opening uh, this uh, September and until October. So, we have successfully opened the school year 2021-2022 all over the country. Next slide, please. Uh, dahil sa pagpirma nyo ng free higher ed, 1.6 million students are now uh, not paying tuition and miscellaneous fees anymore. So, uh, libre na ang tuition and miscellaneous fees ng 1.6 million ng mga estudyante sa lagpas dalawang daang public universities all over the country. The enrollment has increased from academic year 2019-2020 to 2020-2021. So malinaw po, uh, Mr. President, ang mensahe na pwede ka nang hindi lang mangarap kundi makamit ang iyong pangarap sa kolehiyo at university. We also are funding about 435,000 students in public and private universities through the tertiary education subsidy. Yung mga nag-aaral sa public ay nakakakuha ng fast, Mr. President. Naging lifeline ito sa panahon ng COVID. Kasi ang enrollment sa public universities has not declined during COVID. Dahil libre ang tuition. At yung 40,000 na nakukuha nila ay naging ayuda na pangbuhay ng kanilang pamilya ngayong panahon ng COVID. So, 
Kung hindi po napirmahan yung LA10931, Mr. President, mas grabe ang magiging epekto sa panahon ng COVID. Madaming hindi makakapag-aral dahil walang pantuisyon at walang pangtustos. Kasama pa dito ang 210,000 na tulong-dunong beneficiaries. Next slide, please. Maliban sa RA10931, we are also subsidizing now about 91,000 additional students in public and private universities through merit scholarships. Ito ay mga scholarship para sa matatili ng mga estudyante. At dahil sa bayanihan to, binigyan ang CHED ng 300 million pesos para bawasan ng tiglilimang libo yung utang ng mga estudyante sa private schools para mabawasan yung kanilang utang at natulungan natin ng 60,000 ng mga estudyante for uh, this year in 2020. Next slide, please. Meron ho kaming hinahanda na dalawang MOA. Ito po i-discuss ko na kay AS Medjaldea. Yung una ay yung uh, CHED, yung CHED DND DILG Scholarship, nakausap ko rin po si Secretary Ed Anya tungkol dito, meron na kaming MOA na ready ng pirmahan para bigyan ng stipend yung mga anak ng mga AFP at PNT personnel who are killed in action against insurgents. Namatay ho itong programa ito sa AFP na ubusan niyata ng pera. At sa PNP ay walang programang ganito dati. So we have a MOVA ready for uh, discussion and signing para matulungan natin yung anak ng mga killed in action against insurgents. Mm. Kasama po ito dun sa utos nyo several cabinet meetings ago dun sa ating anti-insurgency program. Yung isa pa po na hinahanda namin, may MOVA na rin. Next slide please ay yung balik loob scholarship, ito ho ay sa armed forces, para doon sa mga anak naman ng mga rebel returnees. Ito po ay uh, bahagi ng utos ni A.S. Bingbong in one of the cabinet meetings to work on this program. Ito po ay uh, siguro mag-uusap na lang kami niya, Secretary Ed, kung paano at kailan ito pwedeng simulan. So pinapalawak po natin yung mga Matutulong ang mga bata para sila makapagpatuloy mag-aaral. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, Ni-report na po ni Secretary Bebot Bellio ito, yung tabang OFW. Binigyan natin ng 30,000 pesos ang anak ng mga OFW na bumalik sa Pilipinas at hindi ba kaalis. Uh, ang natulungan natin sa ngayon ay 16,000 719 dependents na. Meron pa po tayong natitirang mga 500 million para dito para pwede natin i-cover itong current school year. So in total, ang matutulungan natin ay uh, pinakakunti yung 16. Kung sila ulit bibigyan pa ng isang taon, matutulungan natin ito. So binibigyan natin sila ng 30,000 pesos ng grant at baka sakali naman kung bumuti yung ekonomiya at sila'y makaalis na, baka hindi na nila kailangan nito sa susunod na taon. So meron ho tayong 1 billion na allocation dyan. Sabi nyo po, doon sa isang programa ay datagdagan nyo ng 3 billion <laughs> itong programa nito. Ito po yung report ni Sec. Bebot. Galing po ang pondo sa CHED pero ang implementasyon ay pinagtutulungan namin ang dole. Next slide, please. Uh, nagpapasalamat kami, Mr. President, na nung January, pinayagan nyo na yung limited face-to-face -face classes sa medicine and allied health sciences. I would like to report that we have uh, inspected and authorized, kasama ko po si Sec. Charlie do sa unang inspection noon, we have inspected and authorized 118 schools to hold limited face-to-face -face classes 
covering about 247 programs. Next slide, please. Ito yung covered sa ngayon, medicine, nursing, physical therapy, midwifery, medtech, speech language, dentistry, hanggang radiologic technology. Ito yung mga programang nag-face-to-face -to -face na yung mga selected schools, mga third year and fourth year students ito, dahil kailangan nila yung hands-on experience para sila ay baging bihasa sa kanilang ginagawa. Next slide, please. So, the, there are now a total of 13,000 students who are authorized to hold face -to, limited face-to-face -face classes in MGCQ areas, in GCQ areas where there are COVID-19 hospitals, and more than 1,000 faculty members who are authorized to hold face-to-face -face classes. Next slide, please. Last uh, April 15, papasalamat po kami sa IATF at inakyat yung category ng mga estudyante at faculty na maging health, essential health workers sila. So napabakunahan na natin ang close to 10,000 students doing face-to-face -face and more than 1,000 faculty members doing face-to-face -face classes. So we have put an additional safety level doon sa mag-face-to-face. -face -face. Kaya po ang resulta, next slide please. Ang resulta, Mr. President, so from January until last month, ang infection level sa mga estudyante ng face-to-face -face -face is less than 1%. It's only 0.3%. Sa faculty, 1.4% ang infection level. Lahat ito ay mild at asymptomatic. Wala pong na-hospital at walang namatay na bata o faculty sa limited face-to-face -face classes. Next slide, please. Kaya ang mihiling, Mr. President, ay baka pwedeng i-expand na natin ito sa ibang programa na kailangan din talaga ng limited face-to-face. Dinala ko na po sa IATF at inindoso na nila sa inyo ang pag-expand sa three main areas, engineering, HRM, at maritime programs. Ito lang po, na, po muna ang uunahin natin kasi dito kailangan talaga ng skills, lalo na sa si engineering. Sa maritime program naman po, sumulat na yung mga international maritime companies sa Philippine schools na kung hindi papayagan yung mga estudyante sumakay ng barko, mag-shipboard, ibibigay po nila yung slot sa ibang bansa. So meron pong urgency na payagan natin sila kasi kung hindi ko maka-shipboard, hindi maka-train sa barko yung ating mga estudyante, sila po ay hindi makakakuha ng uh, hindi makaka-graduate at hindi po makakasakay sa mga barko sa labat. So ito po ay uh, pumayag, uh, in-endorse na po ng IATF uh, three weeks ago at pinadala ko na po ang sulat sa inyo. Uh, ligtas naman po, mahigpit ang ating guidelines. 24 pages na guidelines na ginawa ng CHED at DOH. Wala pa pong namamatay, wala pang na-hospital. Uh, sisiguruhin ho namin na kung papayagan nyo itong mga ito, ganun din po kababa yung infection level. Finally, Mr. President, sa pagtutulungan namin ni Secretary Vince at instruction ni ES Medialdea, tapos na po yung guidelines ng CHED at saka Department of Health para payagan yung mga estudyante sa 4th year and 5th year medicine and nursing at yung mga graduate na hindi pa nakakatapos ng licensure exam, napapayagan silang maging vaccinator para po dumami yung ating mga magbabakuna. Tapos na po yung guidelines isusumitin namin sa IATF next week. Kung okay ho sa IATF, baka pwede nang i-implement ito pagkatapos. Nakausap po natin lahat ng schools sila yung susuporta ah, sa kanilang mga estudyante para mapabilis po natin yung pagbakunan. 
Maraming salamat, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to ask you uh, your permission to allow me to say something about it on the procurement of the masks, face shields, and personal protective equipment for healthcare workers. Ako ba, uh, well, I made this guarantee that these transactions are legal, that there is no wrongdoing, there is no crime involved here, that I am willing to resign kung may corruption. Yan ang binigay ko, and I will do it at kung may makita sila. You know, in March of last year, we imposed strict quarantine protocols and lockdowns in Luzon and as part of a response in the COVID-19 pandemic. By first week of April, we have had an increasing number of cases of deaths which included our health workers and doctors. Back then, the situation was becoming dire as we also had very limited supplies of personal protective equipment or PPEs in our hospitals. In fact, kulang na kulang ang supply and ang capacity natin at that time in dealing with the virus was just almost uh, not really nil but uh, almost let me find the inadequate well, at that time, that nobody, no country was really prepared, uh, just like uh, any other. Uh, ano. In a pandemic, you are racing against time to save lives, quick to decisions and actions, and had to be made to be able to do this. Congress granted executive department special powers under Bayanihan 1. And the size of these powers, we procured a total of 288,000 PPEs in April 2020 from China through PSDBM. And were transported to the country via C-130 PAL and Cebu Pacific flights. Alam mo, ako na mismo, sabi ko nga, as I have stated for the end time, <clears throat> 